My name is Juliana. I'm one of the librarians at Anoka Ramsey Community College, and this is the first time I've tried doing this, so I'm hoping that it works. So if you can see my slideshow screen, it shows our mission statement. It's essentially, it says that we're here for you, and we provide materials, access to materials held by other libraries across the state, and instruction about how to find and use those materials to support the curriculum that you're taking in your classes. From the Anoka Ramsey homepage, you will find our library page by hovering over the words student resources in the dark blue bar and clicking on library in the menu that drops down. If you don't know the Anoka Ramsey homepage address, it's www.anokaramsey.edu. Once you click on that library, you'll see our homepage. And for today, we're going to be using the scholarly journals and newspaper databases link, which if you click on it, it will open up a list of databases that we have available. EBSCO and Gale contain the majority of our databases. We'll start by clicking on the hyperlink for EBSCO. This will take you to a page with a list of our EBSCO databases. You can scroll down the page to find the one you want, or you can use the hyperlinked alphabet at the top of the page to navigate down the list. If you click on E, it will take you down to the section where EBSCO Megafile can be found. Also note that this is where you could find our ebook collection and search through all of our ebooks by clicking on that ebook collection link. Um, just as a quick aside, I'll, if I click on that, this is what you would see. You would see a search box where you can use um, keyword searches or titles or author's names, whatever information you have about a book that you're looking for. If you were to scroll down, you see that you can search by discipline, you can search by topic, different features that they offer in the database. But let's go back to um, our database list. I would recommend using EBSCO Megafile for your class because um, EBSCO has quite a few different journals related to communication in there. Um, EBSCO provides a description for the contents of each database so that it helps patrons select the appropriate one for their needs. Just click on the hyperlinked title to go to the search page. You'll see a general search box with various search option links below it. This is a basic search. You can use this for a keyword search and it will search for your terms that you type in anywhere in the record. It provides a broad search, but it might retrieve results that are irrelevant and you might end up with more results than you care to have to search through. A subject term search will help narrow the search results, but the exact terms from the controlled vocabulary must be used. You can locate these in the subject term thesaurus. That link is located at the top of the screen under the word subjects, just click on that. Once you click on that, it will take you to a page that looks like this, and you're going to want to use the browsing search box to find subject terms related to your topic. So type in something that you're looking for, let's say interpersonal relationships, as I did here, Click the Relevancy Ranked Radio button before you click Browse so that it will bring the most relevant search terms to the top of your results. Otherwise, you would get like an A to Z list if you use the default. Um, and that might not be as efficient. So after you click Browse, if your search term shows up with the word Use and a different hyperlinked term, that means that the hyperlinked term is the proper term to use for your search. That's one of their actual subject terms in their list. You can scan through that list of results to see if there are more linked terms that are appropriate for your topic. You see, uh, here it says in, use interpersonal relations. If you click on that link, interpersonal relations, it will take you to a page that looks like this, where you get a scope note, which describes the kinds of topics that you'll find if you use that term. It will also provide broader terms and narrower terms that may be useful for you. You could click on those or use those in your search. 
as another example, I typed in coworkers. So there's a variety of angles that you could look at that like coworker relationships or workplace romance or shared workspaces, any of those things you could um, use as your um, subject term when you go back to your search. Okay, so let's say that you've selected the terms that you want to try using. Um, you're going to go up to the top of that page, click on advanced search, which will take you back to a search page where you can enter your subject terms you've selected. So let's say I selected these. I typed in interpersonal relations because I said that's the one you should use. I put relationship quality in quotation marks because that will return those two words in that order um, rather than like splitting them up or uh, it'll look for that phrase rather than just the, the words in separately. And then I picked communication. Make sure that you use and between your keywords so that all of your terms get included in the results. Um, if you get too many results, you could change from the default, which is select a field, to an actual subject term um, field. You could, and that will help narrow down your results if you have too many. If you're not getting enough results, you could check this box to increase the number of results. It says also search within full text of the article. So rather than just searching, um, if you're doing a subject term search, rather than just searching subject terms, it will expand it to look in the whole article and see if your term shows up in there. So it's, it's another way to expand your results. If you need to use scholarly journals for your project, you just have to make sure that this scholarly peer-reviewed journals box is checked. And that will eliminate any results that don't come from scholarly journals. It's a nice time saver when you're doing a search. Once you've made your choices, then click search, and that will bring you to a list of results. Check the number of results. This one is a total of 200 results. That's a bit high, but it's still manageable. You can scroll down the page and see the other articles, and underneath each article in your results list, you can see the subject terms that are attached to that article, and you'll either see a link to to the um, PDF full text or a link to request the full text. Um, let's see, you'll also see uh, more information about the article, like the volume issue. And then if you click on the title of the article, you will um, get this screen, which is called a detailed record. So it has lots of details about this article. So in the center section, You'll find information about the authors, the source, the subject terms, and the abstract, which is a short synopsis of the article. So that helps you find out more information about whether it's going to work for you or not. Anything that's hyperlinked in blue will take you to a page that has more information about that. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, on the right side, under Tools, you'll see Citation Options. Um, those. It's, you know, it says print, email, and save. It sounds like you could just click print and it would print your article, but it won't. It will only print your citation. Um, I'll talk to you about the, what I think is the best option for your citations in just a minute. Uh, over on the left side, you'll see it says there's a link for PDF full text. You can click on that and see the full article. If you were to click on that, it would bring up a page that shows the article as it would have appeared in the journal. Um, and since you're in a PDF, if you hover the mouse within there, you'll see options for working with the PDF, including downloading, printing, those little icons will take you to those options. Um, the icons for your citation options are still over on the right. They're just condensed a little bit. Uh, if you have trouble printing the article, Try downloading it to your desktop and opening it with Adobe Reader from there, and you should have no trouble printing after that. Uh, let's see. My, okay, let's go talk about um, those options for citation. My favorite option is to use the email um, option for citations. Once you click that email button, you'll see a little um, box like this open at the top of your screen. All you have to do is first, um, type your email address in there. Make sure this box is checked that will provide the PDF as an attachment to the email. 
choose your citation format and for your class I'm assuming you'll be using APA and then click send. Um, it's much, I think it's much better to email this because you do get to um, include the PDF of the article with the email and this prevents having to go back later either to search for the article or to get the citation. You get them both together in your email. It's, it's quite handy and it usually only takes a few minutes to send that to you. It's a nice um, time saver when you're doing research because you can kind of go through the database and just email all these articles that look like good possibilities. Send them out to yourself. You'll have it all together, all your information together in your email. And when you're ready to work on that, you can just go to there and have everything that you need. Remember to check the formatting of the text and the layout of the citation if you copy and paste that citation to your references page. You might have to double space it, you might have to format the hanging indent, um, but other than that, the citations should be up to date. But again, just double check them for your own peace of mind. Let's say that you find an article that does not have the PDF full text available. You will want to um, use a slightly different process to access that article. If there's not a PDF link, that means that we don't own that and we'll have to request it. It will be emailed to your ARCC student email address. So you will want to know your student email address, have that all set up um, before you start requesting these. To get this, um, to get this email to you, you would click on the words link to request full text. That will bring you to a page where it asks you to sign into your library account. You're going to click this sign in link. That will open up an option to choose a star ID. You'll want to click on star ID. You'll want to enter your star ID and password here and click sign on. So you will have to set up your star ID and password, um, activate your star ID and set up your password, sorry before you do this process. Uh, so from here, you will click sign on. Um, it'll take you back to a detailed record of that article. You're going to click request via interlibrary loan. That will take you to a page on the next screen, which um, will provide information about the article. And that information should populate those fields automatically. You just need to scroll down to the bottom Double check your email and information, um, make sure that's accurate, and then click send request. Then on the final screen, you'll click I agree with the terms. These are the copyright terms, copyright restrictions, and you have to click the I agree. And then that's it. Your article should be emailed to you within a day or two. You're finished. So hopefully this will help you access and find those articles that you need. Um, one thing I will tell you, if you have trouble accessing the databases, for example, if too many people use the wrong password for their star ID when they're trying to access these databases, I believe the server interprets that as a denial of service attack and they'll block access to that site from your IP address for, I don't know if it's an hour or three or something, um, just as a protection type of thing. So. If that happens and you can't access the, nobody can access these databases, you can still find full text articles from EBSCO and Gale at um, eLibrary Minnesota. The, um, the address is on the screen. Um, the only thing that you won't have here is the option to request full text articles that we don't own because you won't have a library to send them to. You won't be logged in through a library. You'll be just, just be looking at it through the state of Minnesota. But other than that, um, you should still be able to access and use those in the same way um, as you do, as you would on our site. If you have any other questions, um, you can feel free to contact me or if you get stuck, um, my contact information is here and it's also on our homepage on the library webpage. So you can um, access, find it, access it there. Thank you for your time. I hope this has been helpful.